Hello beautiful people. So today's yoga class is all about the feet, the ankles and the calves. So um, a lot of people have problems with their feet, ankles and calves. So this is all according to because of the fascia. So the fascia is like this membrane that coats over all the organs, bones, um, uh, nerve fibers, everything within the body is kind of held and contained by this fascia. So it's an interconnected web and it, can, it communicates all over the body to keep everything in place. So when we get tired or stressed or worried, then this fascia tightens up. So there's incredible scientific evidence now that explains all about this. So we're starting sitting in the dime posture, as you can see. Now there's a link down below to a video that explains how to sit in the diamond posture. So if you find it difficult to sit like this, then please go to that video. Now from here, what I'd like you to do is just to curl up your toes. And let's just bring the hands to the heart and close the eyes. Inhaling and exhaling, just breathing, coming into the body, just relaxing and allowing the healing to begin. So bring the tailbone around, coming toward the navel. So the sit bones coming directly down and just feeling those toes curling all the way back. Now for some people this may be a little uncomfortable, in which case you just bring your fingertips to the floor and do the best that you can. Just here for a couple more breaths. Just allowing everything to just disappear and float away. Beautiful. And let's just come onto the tops of our feet now. And again, you can bring a blanket underneath the ankles if that's difficult sitting this way, or a blanket underneath your knees, pulling it right up so it makes it much more comfortable. So we'll just sit this way. Great. And then what I'd like you to do is just bring your right foot forward so that the right knee, that uh, right foot is next to the left knee and just interlace the fingers around the knee and just straightening your body up, lifting the sternum up. And then bringing your fingertips to the floor and just rocking yourself gently forward and backward. I'll just move that arm out of the way so you can see. So just gently rocking forward and backward do three so you're just stretching through the front of that ankle and we'll change to the other side so just gently rocking forward and backward and go a little more slowly than me take your time and just feel that stretch all the way through the calf through the ankle it's always good before you start anything like this to just kind of feel what are my feet ankles how am I feeling you know and that way you can, and then while you're doing the practice, you keep aware of how you're feeling. And at the end, you can compare. Because sometimes we wonder if anything's really happening. <laughs> so it's when we can compare how we felt at the beginning and at the end that we really know there's a difference. Beautiful. And then what I'd like you to do is just to bring your right foot to the outside of the left hip and bring the left um, ankle on top of the right knee and then put the fingers in between the toes. So I've got all in between the toes here. And then I'm just gonna rotate that ankle. Now, if that's uncomfortable for you sitting this way, then just sit on a chair. So no one else is looking, it really doesn't matter. So it's just getting that rotation through that ankle. And let's just take our time, there's no hurry whatsoever. Okay, just feeling the movement of the foot and the ankle as you rotate. Keep the chin in, lifting the sternum, shoulder blades down the spine, and then just pull that foot all the way back and then press it all the way forward. So you might like to just grab the tops of the toes to pull the foot all the way down and then flexing all the way back and try pulling back the toes as well. Right, let's do one more, pulling the foot all the way down and then flexing the foot all the way back and pulling the toes back as well. Beautiful work. Let's change to the other side. So, getting yourself grounded on both sit bones, fingers in between the toes 
and let's just rotate the ankle. So take your time and just rotate to the maximum. And notice if there's any point where there's sort of like a like a stuttering. Um, and then just see if you can go back that way a little bit more smoothly the next time around. And then we come back the other way. So it's just an indication of where there may be some knots or tension um, information held in the fascia in, in the body. The body is an amazing interconnected, interwoven machine that houses us and we have to respect it and love it every day. Let's pull that foot all the way back. So I've got my foot hands on top of the toes there and then I will flex the foot so I can just grab it with the other hand and flex it. All right, and then whatever works for you and I'm just pulling the toes toward the body and then I'm flexing it away. So a lot of our problems with knees and calves and all that kind of stuff and, and sore feet is because of tightness through the calf muscles. So let's just get onto our hands and knees in the cat-cow position. And we'll just very gently, first of all, let's just um, get some air into the body. So inhaling, stretching the body all the way up and I'm up on the tops of my toes. So I've got my toes curled and then exhaling all the way as I bring my head up. And then we'll inhale here and then we'll exhale all the way down into the chest and then we'll inhale all the way up and then we'll exhale and then inhale and then exhale one more inhale and then exhale concaving the spine and then inhale and then exhale and let's bring that right foot back and we'll just go forward and back <clears throat> just flexing through that foot so we really need to make sure we get a good stretch through that ankle every day so the Achilles tendon which basically attaches that calcaneus or the heel bone um, to the calf muscle so that whole area, when it gets tight, then affects the foot, which has 29 bones. So we're just going to forward and back through here. And then just pressing all the way back. While you do that, bring your shoulder blades back, your sternum forward, pull your belly in, keep your back nice and long. Kneecap lifted. Good. And bring that heel out a little as you lift the inner um, thigh upwards. So the inner thigh here comes up to the sky. And let's replace the knee. Let's straighten out the other leg now and we'll just go forward and back with that leg. So we're just really um, working on stretching through that Achilles tendon, stretching the calf muscle. Very nice. Excellent. Okay, now bringing your knees apart and then just sitting back onto your heels and stretch your arms forward looking between the hands open up all the fingers and just looking between the hands keeping the arms strong bring the shoulders back chest forward and then bring the forehead to the floor Okay, we're going to do a little bit of dynamic work and then we're going to do a couple of long holds. So that's called Jaya Yoga and long holds are very powerful. So just curling the toes under, <coughs> excuse me, and then pressing back into the dog. So let's take the dog for a walk. So just as a dog likes going for a walk, so do we. So we're just bringing our heels down toward the floor. And just observing the tracking of the knees, that the knees and the ankles and the toes are all in the line. And make sure all the fingers are separated. And we press back, bringing our, pulling our lower belly in, really straightening through the spine. Okay, and let's just bring our right heel to the floor. Holding it there, keep pressing back through the hands. Now if your hands are sliding, then put your hands up against the wall and then change to the other leg. Great. 
Now let's just bring both heels down. So we're just going to press and bring both heels down to the ground. So we're going to stay here for about a minute. So bring the heels toward the floor. So this is very good exercise for the arms as well, you may have realized. So we really bring the shoulder blades down the spine, dorsal spine, so that's the back, like the upper back, into like it's trying to come toward the chest. And the chest keeps coming forward toward the hands. And the shoulders keep coming away from the ears and the heels keep coming towards the floor and straighten those legs as much as you possibly can straight 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 and then look at your feet and open and separate all the toes and then place them back down gently and you should be able to see your heels so if you can see your heels then move them out so the insides of the feet are parallel beautiful and let's just come forward into a plank for a little bit of a rest and let's come back into our Supta Virasana. It's actually just a Virasana. So just the knees apart and coming forward, just rest. So stretching those arms out, bring the knees so that they're hip width, curling under the toes and then pressing back up into the downward dog. Now this time I want you to bring the left foot to the centre between the two feet and then bring the right foot just onto the left ankle and pressing back with the hands. So you might find you can get closer to the ground this time. Um, so I'm certainly finding my heels coming to the ground this time. So I'm just putting all my weight onto that left foot. Um, so I'm really stretching through the back of the calf here. That's it. Keep pressing back with the hands. I'm just staying here for a count of 10, 9, 8, 4, 2, 1. Beautiful. So let's bring the feet back and walk them out again. So the feet are apart and then bring the right foot to the centre and then bring the left toes onto the back of the right ankle. So just stretching that foot down. That's it. Looking good. Yeah, you're all looking fabulous out there. All those imaginary people. <laughs> Life has changed. All right. Good. And counting for 10, 9, 8. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful. All right, one more walk out with that dog. Marvellous. Now this time just bend the knees and, and uh, press back with the hands. So you're doing a dog pose, but with the knees very bent, like the shins are almost parallel with the floor. So we're getting another kind of stretch through the ankles, through the backs of the calves, which is working through the plantar fascia, which is the, um, the membrane that covers underneath our feet. So pushing back with those hands. That's it, and bring the knees to the floor. And then bring your chest forward and bring your chest down to the floor. And let's have the fingertips just underneath the, the shoulders, which is where they probably are naturally already. And just bring the elbows in and legs together. Great. And press the pubic bone into the floor and at the same time bring the um, pubic bone up toward the chest. So you're getting the pelvic tilt here. So you're really working on bringing that tailbone down because a lot of our um, uh, problems with our feet actually originate all around this whole area too and I will do another a video about that um, next week. So elbows are in and then lifting up the chest and trying to bring those shoulder blades together. Imagine there's like um, a two dollar coin between your shoulder blades. You're really trying to squeeze that together and looking straight ahead. Great. So I've got my legs as straight as I can and I'm pressing onto the tops of the feet and then I'm pressing through the hands and lifting up the chest. 
So I'm just really working on the lumbar spine here. Beautiful, and let's relax. Turn the head to one side and bring the arms by the sides, big toes touching, and just rest here for a moment. Great. Now let's bend up both legs so knees are hip width apart again and then grab your ankles. Now if you can't grab your ankles, oh, here it is, if you can't grab your ankles and get a strap. Now that could be your dog leash, it could be the belt from around your um, uh, you know, house robe or whatever. So we can put the belt around the ankles if we so wish like this or if you can then just grab your ankles with your hands. And then what I want you to do is press that pubic bone down again, bring that $2 coin in between the shoulder blades and lifting the chest and then flex the feet and bring yourself up. Good. So we're just really working on a little bit more work through that spine, through the lumbar spine. So this all works to get that um, fascia loosened in the correct way to help with our foot pain, strange humor. Okay, and then exhale and bring the head to the other direction, big toes touching. Feel your heartbeat on the floor. Okay, so let's do one more. So bending the feet again, this time the feet are flexed. So again, use the strap if you need to and put the hands around the ankles and then lift up this time with the feet pointing. So feel how different that feels. So just really coming up here with the feet pointing. See, so looking straight ahead rather than craning the neck, lifting those feet up, pressing the pubic dome, sternum chest coming forward, shoulder blades together. Beautiful. And let's just release one leg down and then bring your hand on the top of the foot and bring your left arm just in front of you as a prop and then see if you can spin your hand around on top of the toes and just bring that foot all the way down to the buttocks. So it's sort of just on the outside of, of the um, hip bone is the way you're heading toward. So the other leg is just straight behind you. So we're just getting some stretch actually through the front of the quadricep and through the front of the ankle. Good. And then let's flex that foot, bring it back down, straighten the leg and then bring it down. Okay, the other leg, so bending it up, right arm is in front of you, putting the hand on top of the foot with the heel behind you and the fingers pointing toward the front and just really pulling that foot down. So really feeling that stretch through the front of the quadricep. Enjoying every moment. And then let's flex that foot out behind us and then bring it down. Nice. Excellent. Okay. And let's come up to kneeling position again. So from here, bring your feet apart and feet heels onto the ground and then press the knees apart and your hands come together. So I'll show you what that looks like from the side. So it's like you're frog and we just really lift the chest and push the knees away so it's a very nice um, it feels really great when you get it so you just bring the bottom down to the mat as much as you possibly can so you're just getting a good stretch through those ankles Wonderful. okay so we're going to come up to standing so just bringing the hands to the floor and 
Um, let's first of all have the insides of the feet parallel and we'll just hang down here. So you can try putting your hands underneath your feet, toes on the wrists, bend the knees and really press those toes onto the wrists and then straightening up the legs. So bringing your weight to the front edge of the heel. So that's where the heel meets the sole so that we have the hips in alignment because we have a tendency to be leaning backward. That's it. And bring the elbows towards your shins. Trying to really straighten those legs and pushing the heels out. So look, the heels don't move. The insides of the feet are parallel, but you just moving the heels out. It's a dynamic kind of a stretch. Nice. And then you can come up either straight legged or bending your knees. So you choose. I like the straight legged version, so I just press the heels and the hands on the backs of the hips and I come all the way up. So we're going to finish up here, just bring your hands to your chest and I've got the insides of the feet parallel, feet are hip width apart and lifting the kneecaps and pressing down through all four, close your eyes, pressing down through all four parts of the feet and then lift and separate all the toes and then bring them down as separate as possible and then moving the heels from inside to out. So that actually, you don't move the heels on the mat, but you move like the feeling, you press them out. And at the same time, bring the tailbone down and the hips in, lower belly in, lengthening through the neck. And then using the thumb against the breastbone to lift the chest as the shoulder blades come down. So there's a movement of energy that comes up the front of the body and down the back. So this is the movement of the energy of the body. So you're lifting up from the front of the ankles, the knees, belly, chest, lifting up the head from the crown and then coming down at the back, shoulders down, shoulder blades down, hips down, tailbone wraps down, all the way down to the heels and back to the toes. So just imagine this cycle And then just really ground yourself into the earth. So feel the earth coming up to meet your feet. Feel yourself fully grounded and supported by Mother Earth. So a way that we can really take care of our feet as well is to make sure that we get out there with bare feet in nature. Have a walk on the sand, on the grass, just trying to earth yourself. So getting your feet to walk in a natural way. Try crossing different terrains. So I wear those toe shoes and climb over rocks with it. So it's good for your brain, good for your feet. We're supposed to feel things underneath our feet. Okay. So namaste everyone. That's all we have time for. I'll send you, I'll put a link below also for meditation so that you can um, do a meditation afterwards. It's always good to completely relax after you've done a yoga session and then just observe the feeling of how your feet feel now compared to how they were before. Namaste.